Before we get started, I'd like to thank Videoblocks.com for sponsoring this video. Videoblocks is an awesome resource for high quality stock footage, motion backgrounds, and templates for After Effects. Easily build a motion graphics logo for YouTube, your website, or business with one of their many After Effects templates. If you're looking for audio and music, check out their sister site, Audioblocks.com, for a massive library of music, sound effects, and loops. And lastly, if you're looking for stock photos and illustrations, check out their other sister site, graphicstock.com. All three sites offer both a monthly and yearly subscription with unlimited downloads and royalty-free licensing. Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part six of my pop rock mixing series in Logic Pro 10. In this video, we're gonna talk about drum replacement or drum layering, um, where we can either replace or layer uh, a sample with our uh, acoustic drum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, a, a, a kick sample, and for every single kick hit, uh, on this track, we're gonna layer up a sample underneath it. We're gonna do the same thing for the snare and we're gonna do the same thing for the toms. Now, when we do this, we're gonna do this with some uh, very specific samples. Uh, this is what they sound like. So here's the kick. The snare. The high tom. And the low tom. Now, I will make sure, uh, because I didn't put this in the, the download file, um, for this, the, uh, the session that you can purchase to work along with me. I didn't include these in that session, so I'll make sure I include a free link uh, in the video description for everyone if you'd like to download these samples. I'm using these samples because they're ones that I made myself in the studio, and um, this song is actually part of an album that'll be coming out, so I want all of the songs to have the same kick and snare and tom tone, and so that's uh, that's why I'm using these specific samples and not some sample that's included with Logic. So the first track we're gonna layer with samples is the kick in track, so I'm just gonna select that track, and then I'm gonna press Control D. What Control D does is it pulls up the drum replacement doubling uh, window, which uh, essentially what it does is it senses transients in the recording and then places a MIDI note for each transient in the recording. Now. So we're, we're using the kick here, so I'm going to change the instrument to kick. Um, and then we're going to play around the uh, relative threshold here because we don't want all of the notes uh, seen to be replaced. We just want the ones that are actually kick drums. This one right here, that's a snare drum. This is also a snare drum. So we don't want the snare to be uh, in there. So I'm going to play with the threshold until it seems like I'm just getting um, basically just all of my, my kick hits in there. So that looks about right. I'm gonna keep the trigger note on auto, uh, and basically what it does is it auto selects what MIDI note uh, that sample is gonna be triggered from. Um, for kick drum, it's typically C1, uh, and if you keep this on auto, it will put it on C1. So I'm just gonna select that. But you can actually select any note you want, which is pretty, uh, pretty cool. Um, and I'm just gonna hit okay. And you'll see what it's uh, done is it's created a kick in plus track that's a, a MIDI clip underneath our audio track. So let me just play that one. All right, so that's cool. Um, it's basically just, you know, sensed the transients in the drum, in the, uh, the kick recording and layered it with uh, a sampled kick uh, with the EXS24. Um, I don't want to use that kick. I want to use a different kick. So I'm going to uh, wipe out the EXS24. And instead of using the EXS24, I'm going to use Ultra Beat just because I think it's a little simpler. I'm going to throw Ultra Beat on the instrument there. From the um, menu up here, I'm going to select under Drum Kits the Drag and Drop Samples Kit. So this basically just gives us a blank drum kit with nothing in it. And down here on the C1 sample, we are going to place our kick sample. So I'm gonna grab my kick sample out here and drag it right there. So there's a couple things we need to do before we can actually start using the sample. Um, the first thing we need to do is on envelope number four, make sure it's uh, envelope four selected right here. Um, you'll see that envelope four by default controls amplitude or volume. Um, if we keep the this envelope really short like this, you are not going to get the full length of the note. Uh, basically, the note's going to get cut off short. So we're going to grab this release parameter here and pull this all the way out. Uh, the second thing is Ultra Beat is pretty loud. Uh, we'll probably be clipping uh, quite a bit if I don't 
uh, pull the main volume down a bit. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull both the um, sample volume down and the main volume down. And I'm just going to hit play with it soloed here and just uh, set the level. So we're basically not clipping, but we're, you know, the level's pretty loud on the meter. All right, so that's fine. All right, so let's uh, listen to this with our newly layered kick drum. All right, so it uh, sounds pretty accurate. Let's go to the end here because there's a sort of kind of quick fill toward the end. Let's see if it actually did this correctly. Cool. So it's pretty. It's you know it's pretty accurate. Um, the only thing that we may want to do is I'm going to open up the MIDI clip here. I'm going to double click on that. And it tries to estimate velocity the best it can based on the amplitude of the transient going in. Um, this is one feature of Logic's drum replacement tool that I, I don't feel is very accurate. So what I typically do is I end up just selecting all of the MIDI notes, um, going down to the velocity uh, slider down here, holding option, and then just setting them all to the same value. I'll set them all to like, I don't know, like 100 or something. So that'll work. So this creates another problem, though. Like they're they're all sort of the same dynamic, um, which is fine. Like we're like what we're actually going to do with this is we're going to tuck this sample underneath the kick drum. We're not going to be hearing this sample, you know, full blast uh, like it is now. But one thing that we want to do is all these little quick notes. We may want to pull those down a little bit because the way the notes played, it's da 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 da. The short note, the first note is quicker and softer than the second note on the downbeat. So one thing you may want to consider doing, and I'm actually going to pull this up just a tad more, there we go, um, is go through the entire track, and it's kind of a pain because it, it does take a lot of work to do. Um, go, through the, go through the track and either use the velocity tool um, or you can just use the, um, the velocity slider down here and select all of those little quick notes and pull their velocities down so it sounds a little bit more realistic. The, the quick notes sound a little more realistic. So I'll do a few of them and then I'll do the rest of them off screen, but I think the best way to do it is just to hold shift and select each one, and I'm just continuing to hold shift and get a whole bunch of them selected. I'll do this one. And by the way, if you're wondering how I got the notes to not sound anymore as I select them, um, there was one option I turned off. I'll show you in just a moment. I'm going to pull these down to, I don't know, like 76. There you go. So all these quick notes are 76, while all the other, uh, the other uh, sort of downbeat notes are 121. So if you don't want to hear notes as you drag over them, you can uh, deselect this MIDI out option right here. Uh, with that on in green, you'll hear the notes as you drag over them. And when you turn that off, you won't. So there we go. So I'm going to do the rest of those off screen just uh, as to not waste time. But let's listen to what this sounds like with uh, with that velocity change in there. Yeah, that makes a lot of difference. Uh, I'm just going to change the icon on the kick drum here. Just right click. Uh, not that it matters too much. I'm just going to call it uh, kick plus, not kick in plus. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to roll the volume down on that quite a bit because really I don't want to hear it quite as loud as it is right now. Really it's there just for sort of definition. It gives gives the, the kick, kick a little bit more punch. All right, next let's uh, move on to the snare drum. So typically with the snare, I look at the snare top and snare side or snare bottom. Uh, whatever uh, sort of miking uh, technique you're using, and I look to see which of the two um, recordings is the most isolated. And in my case here, it looks like the 
uh, snare top is, just, just by a hair. Uh, sometimes, depending on how you place the mic, uh, your snare bottom or snare side might actually be the better choice uh, to use as the uh, the replacement guide. So I'm going to click on my snare top, hit Control D, just like we did before. Pulls up the uh, drum replacer doubler um, plugin or tool here. Um, we're going to go and make sure that the instrument is set to snare. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we don't have any um sort of false hits in here i know when we get to the end we may need to um go in and manually add some notes in i'll get that i'll get to that in just a moment but it looks like where we're at right now is pretty good negative 19.7 uh the trigger note i'll put on auto but just so you know the auto trigger note for snare drum is d1 um so we'll go with that there we go just like before, I'm just going to change the icon. I know it's really of no consequence, but I like to do it anyway. Whoops, that's a kick drum. There we go. I'll just call it snare plus. I'm going to, uh, well, just like before, it added an EXS24 instrument. Um, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to add Ultra Beat on here again. And again, just like we did before, go up to the presets menu, go to drum kits, go to drag and drop samples kit. And we are going to pull the snare drum into the sample loading area, except I just did it wrong. I put it on C1. It needs to be on D1. So what I'll do is just grab the little number right here and pull this up to D1. There we go. So the snare on, snare's on D1. Uh, we're going to do the same thing we did before. Go to envelope number four, pull the release time all the way out. We're going to pull the uh, master volume down a bit as well as the uh, channel volume or the sample volume. And let me hit that a couple times. Make sure that we're not clipping. We get a little bit more headroom available. Maybe a little bit louder. There we go. All right, so uh, let me close up the library. And we'll do the same thing we did before. Double click on the MIDI region. Um, and it's gonna hit uh, Z to see everything. Hit Command A to select everything, hold Option and pull the velocity up quite a bit. I'm going to go to like the top end of the hundreds there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, and snare drum's a little bit more dynamic than the kick drum is, and it tends to pick up a little bit more bleed. So what I'm going to do off screen is I'm going to listen to the entire recording with the snare replacer, and I'm going to make sure that there isn't anything that is erroneous, because sometimes the drum, drum replacement, you'll find that the MIDI notes uh, aren't 100% accurate sometimes. You have to go back in, delete notes if it creates ones that don't need to be there, sometimes add notes. Uh, if it for, if it you know didn't uh, sense a transient, so I'm gonna do that off screen and then I'll be right back. All right, so off screen, what I did was I went through and I listened to the entire recording and watched uh, the playback of the uh, snare replacer down in the piano roll editor just to make sure everything was okay. Now. The vast majority of this sounds good and it worked out fine, but one thing you're going to find is more dynamic instruments like snare drum uh, where you can have little ghost notes and little pattery notes and flams and rim taps and all these different um, playing techniques, these variations on, on playing techniques, you're going to find it's going to be more difficult to uh, replace or layer. Now, um, I've made some notes. Um, I made some notes during playback and there's... Uh, about eight different areas we need to address. So the first one's around measure 36. And at 36, we've got this little snare uh, variation here. Let's, let's listen to it. So the problem's right here. It goes da da do da 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 do. And there's two snares. There's the, uh, the second snare, but there's supposed to be another snare right here. Really, for this, the best thing we can do is zoom in on the... Um, and I'm going to make sure I turn beat mode off. I'm going to turn snap mode off as use the uh, the track up here as a reference. Use the audio track as a reference. I'm going to hold option to duplicate this note. And I'm just going to place this right where the playhead is. So the, the playhead up here is linked to the playhead down here. So we can sort of use the playhead as a reference. Now, that drum hit was quite a bit softer than the second note. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to pull the velocity down quite a bit. So we'll do like 63. That works. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit uh, 
Command C to copy that into the clipboard because we're going to reuse that note uh, later. So let's listen to this. There we go. Uh, the next one I've got in my notes is measure 53. So let's move up to 53 or 52 rather. It's the same fill, exact same fill, uh, just in a different spot. So we'll again use this top track up here as a reference. Hit Command V to paste that in. We're good to go. All good. Uh, the next place to check out is 62. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, we've got some notes in here that are like little ghost notes. Let me pull the uh, the, the waveform zoom up. It's right here. And let's see if we can uh, maybe see these notes a little bit better. Yeah, there's like little ghost notes on, on the... Um, on the uh, the snare track. Now, you could leave this alone and just not even uh, bother with them, but... In fact, those are so quiet, I think I am just gonna leave them alone. Let's see if this one even needs to be there. Yeah, I'm gonna let me leave that one there. I'm gonna pull the volume on that one down, or the velocity down a bit. And this is, again, what I said before, this is why I'm layering the drums, not just completely replacing the snare. The snare at certain points is far too dynamic for me to just get rid of it and completely replace it. We're still going to be hearing both the top and side mics in the mix along with this sampled snare, which is going to be tucked underneath it. All right, so the next one's at uh, 102. Uh, this looks like the same little snare rhythm that we had at the beginning. Yeah, there's just that extra little swing note in there. So again, I'm just going to... Grab the playhead and just sort of mash it up at the front end of that note. Click down in here and hit Command V to paste in. All right, so the next one's at uh, around 128. Let's listen to it. Yeah, it sounds like right here, there's one, or maybe it's right here. Yeah, if there's two hits or dot. Da, da, right here. So there's one right right there. There we go. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm not just trusting the grid, the grid lines, is because this song was swung. So it's played uh, a little bit more loosely and off the grid. Um, and that's, that's, that's the reason why, really. Um, so that was 128. The next one, oh, I skipped one. There's one at 118. Let's move back, 118. Yeah, it's another one just like at the beginning, same thing as before. Just grab the front end, that note, paste it in. By the way, if you missed it earlier, I pulled that other one up a bit just because it seemed a little bit louder than the others. All right, so that's 118. We looked at 128, so there's two more, 152. Let's see what this sounds like. It's another one of those ones, like the one at the beginning. If I really wanted to, I could just sort of copy and paste it and put it in all, all the places, but I figured I'd just show them all to you so you know that where they're at if you're following along with me. All right, so the last one is at 163. Uh, this is the big fill at the end, so this one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, let's listen to it. Yeah, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these out. Let's listen to that one more time with them out. It sounds like there's some sort of triplets, a uh, little softer, like, pattery notes going on in the snare. Um, and we can see it right there. Um, one of the things we're going to do, it's the triplet pattern, not a straight eighth note or sixteenth note pattern, is we're going to change our grid to a triplet grid. So I'm going to cl click up here um, under display mode and go to the custom display. And I'm going to change... Uh, the grid from a 16th note, the grid division from a 16th note to a 12th note, which is the same thing as an 8th note triplet. So in now instead of four divisions per beat, I have three divisions per beat. So I think the best way to, to do this, um, if you're not very good at deciphering rhythm, is going to be just to put a note. I'm going to copy this first one, first and foremost. Uh, actually, I don't even need to copy it. I'll just use the... Uh, the pencil tool here actually 
use the pencil tool, and I'm going to click in a note and all of these. It's going to sound like garbage at first, but we'll fix that. And you can see the last snare hit is right here. Now some of these are some of these are, are not snare hits, like this one right here. See how there's no note there? So that note, we're going to get get rid of it. This is sort of a softer snare. This is a bigger snare, a medium one. But there's not one there. There's a tom there instead. And then what we're going to do is because all these notes are a little bit softer, and if you look at them not zoomed in, they don't really look that that loud. They really aren't that loud. We're going to pull all of these down quite a bit. So I'm going to pull the velocities down quite a bit. But you'll notice that they kind of sound samey. They sound sort of robotic. So my um, solution to this is to go through with the velocity tool and the ones that appear loud, like the first four pretty loud, pull those ones up. And, and I'm kind of just doing it at random. I'm sticking these up in the 90, uh, 80 range. This one right here is pretty soft, so I'll keep it where it's at. But then the next two are kind of louder, so we'll maybe pull those up. The third one's a little lower. And then when we get over here, this one's kind of softer, so we'll keep that down. But then the next two are kind of louder, so we'll pull those up. Let's see if that sounds maybe maybe just a little bit more uh, realistic, just having those velocity changes. It sounds more realistic, but it's too loud, so I'm going to pull all of them down. Let's try that. Yeah, it's a little bit better. And then once once we hide that and tuck that in the mix, it should sound a little bit better. All right, so those are all the spots that I wanted to touch on in the snare. If it seems like a lot of work going through and making these adjustments, it is a lot of work. I mean, like I said, the more dynamic the drum is, the more work it's going to take to uh, get it to sound right when you... Uh, drum replace it or drum layer it so it's just it's just one of those things it takes work and it takes practice to get it right but once you do get it right it really can make the drums stand out in the mix uh, much better than than just a couple dynamic mics on the snare will do alone all right so what I'm gonna do now is off screen I'm gonna go use the drum replacement tool on both the high and low toms just like I do with the kick and snare using the exact same process so run the drum replacement doubling tool set all the velocities to the same value use ultra beat to load in the sample and then double check the track for any extra or missing notes. The toms should be considerably easier because they're not used nearly as much as the kick and the snare. Also off screen, I'll lower the levels of the doubling tracks so they fit nicely underneath the original recording. And I'll be right back uh, with the finished product and play you the before and the after. All right, so off screen, like I said, I went through and I did drum replacement doubling on Tom 1 and Tom 2 using the two samples uh, that I've provided. Again, using Ultra Beat. Um, what I've also done to the kick, snare, and tom one so far is I have used a function called bounce in place. And I'm going to show you how to do that on tom two here. You right click, and you can, if it doesn't pop up right at the top, uh, what you can do is you can choose it from bounce and join, bounce in place, or you can just press control B, which is the key command for that. And what this does is it basically converts the MIDI data into an audio waveform. Now, there's some advantages to this in that we don't have to keep our Ultra Beat instruments around, nor do we have to keep the uh, Ultra Beat instrument present. I, I'm always hesitant to uh, keep sample-based instruments around in sample and MIDI form because sometimes when you jump from one computer to another, sometimes those, or maybe you accidentally move the sample library uh, or whatever, you end up losing uh, the sample files. So this is always a big issue with sample-based instru instruments with me. So I end up, I typically end up rendering and bouncing them in place just like so. Uh, one thing just to be aware of, when you do bounce these in place, um, make sure that you set their uh, gain to unity, to zero, and also make sure that their pan is right in the center because depending on how you bounce this in place, you may ac uh, accidentally render in the volume changes as well. So I'll just call this Tom2 plus, hit OK. It's going to render us a new audio file uh, with that ultra, uh, you know, via that Ultra B instrument. And we end up with an audio track instead of a MIDI bass track or instrument track. So that's pretty nifty. Um, one other thing I want to mention is with the toms, particularly in that last fill, 
Um, I kind of had to do the same thing I did at the kick in the snare. There were some spots where I had to remove notes that were erroneous, and there were also some spots where I had to add in notes manually. So it's not a perfect process. You still have to go through and do some manual editing to get it right. Now, a couple last little things. Uh, one, I'm going to pull down the level of the sampled tracks a bit so they're sort of more on par with the tracks that they're referencing. And the other thing is with the toms, because they're um, they're panned, I'm going to make sure I match the panning. So tom 1 is going to be about 42 to the left, and tom 2 is 40 to the right. The other thing I'm going to do is with the, uh, the two toms, I'm going to pull over the EQs that we applied to the toms. They just sound a little ringy and boingy sounding. And in particular, tom 2 has got a lot of of ring to it uh, in fact let me go ahead and just find a spot where there's a tom fill with tom one and tom two and just solo those out just so you can hear how bad that ring is and what we will do is we'll add the noise gate plugin again to reduce that ring so i don't mind it so much on tom one it almost enhances like the body of of the tom um, but with Tom 2, it's just, it's a long, long ring. So let me throw the uh, noise gate on here. And the way we can do this is we just apply, apply the noise gate like we normally would, adjusting the threshold. But then we just pull the release way up. So it takes a, a little while for the noise gate to let go of the signal and fully duck the signal down. Um, so I don't want this to just auto, like just all of a sudden cut out, which would happen if we used a lower release time. So I'm going to pull it up. A little bit longer and it'll sort of fade it out a bit. So let's try about uh, seven or eight hundred milliseconds. You can probably go a little quicker. Let's try just Tom 2 by itself. Let me try to get a little bit more of the signal in there. Pull the threshold up. There we go. I'll pull the look, look ahead for just a touch as well. So that will help with the, uh, the low tom ring. Again, I, I don't want to completely gate it in an unnatural way, but I also don't want that low tom to be ringing out uh, for so long. All right, so let's listen to a before and after. This is the before with all of the uh, doubling tracks muted. And this is the after with all the doubling tracks turned on. Alright, so that pretty much wraps up the majority of the processing for the drums. Just a few things I want to mention though. One, there are some ways to make sample based drums sound even more natural um, using some advanced sampling techniques like round robin or velocity layering. We didn't do any of that here because really we're still hearing quite a bit of the original recording with the samples just layered with it. Two, if this uh, seems like a lot of work to just get the drums to sound the way we want, uh, you're right, it is a lot of work, but being patient and meticulous about your editing and mixing will usually give you a better result rather than trying to find a quicker, easier way to do it. So in future videos, we'll be moving on to some of the rhythm instruments next, particularly the guitar and bass, and we'll mix them in with the drums. We'll still be adjusting some of the drum levels as we work along to make everything fit together nicely, but again, the vast majority of the processing on the drums is done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel to see multiple new videos added every week. Also, you can check out CarneyMediaGroup.com, where you can view all of my video tutorials, search for specific topics, download the videos ad-free, and in some cases you can purchase session content so you can work along with me in the video. Also, please consider giving a monthly contribution at Patreon.com forward slash Music Tech Help Guy. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.